So as Marta said, my name is Andrew Peelage, and I'm an architectural photographer on a quest to photograph all 432 Frank Lloyd Wright designs around the world. So I thought I would start out with this image to show you what a huge Wright fan I was sporting his favorite color, Taliesin red. And man, I really miss that hair. So let's start from the beginning. Born into an adventurous family, I spent almost every weekend growing up in the backcountry of Arizona. We even had gold claims. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get rich, but all that time spent in the outdoors trying to find the mother load really created a special bond and love for my family in the beautiful landscapes of Arizona. My first camera was a Walgreens disposable. Thanks, Mom. I would take one along on each of these weekend adventures. The trips with my family in the awesome 77 Ford Bronco was the foundation for my love of not only the outdoors, but also landscape photography. And as I grew bigger, so did my cameras. At 16, I set out on my own to explore and capture the beauty of landscapes all around the world. This is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. At one point, it was completely fogged over, and I remember hearing people next to me wanting a refund because they couldn't see the canyon. I laughed and told them to wait five minutes, and they got more than any amount of money could buy. Along with landscape photography, I started experimenting more with long exposures. This is a composite image from Sky Harbor International Airport in Arizona. Each line is a different airplane, taking off on the right and landing on the left. It was very interesting for me to capture light with a camera in a way the human eye could not. My first experience with Wright was 2011. I remember the windy road up through the Sonoran Desert to get to Taliesin West. It reminded me a lot of the adventures with my family and taking the tour and seeing Wright's blending of architecture to, to the desert for the first time blew my mind. It was everything I loved about the desert in a building. After asking, okay, begging the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation to take some photos up at and West, they allowed me one sunset, score. At the time, I was still very much an amateur, but this was the spot, just outside the drafting studio where I decided to take my first photograph. This was the start of my career photographing Frank Lloyd Wright. A few months later, I overheard a gentleman in the lobby saying he just bought the David Wright house in Arizona and was planning on knocking it down. Now, me being a newbie in the Frank Lloyd Wright, family, I rushed over and asked if I could take photographs before he knocked it down. He replied, well, you better come tomorrow then. I did, and due to the efforts of many people, the house was saved. That same year, Wright's personal photographer of over 20 years, Pedro Guerrero, passed away. He understood Wright and his architecture in ways that few have or will. I owe a lot of my inspiration and drive to Pedro. This image of Wright's office on the right was taken in Pedro's honor the night of his passing. Guerrero's image is on the left. Now with my background in little Taliesin red t-shirts and landscape photography, it was love at first sight for Wright. In 2006, I launched my project to photograph all remaining Wright designs. The next 10 images document some of them over the past four years. See if you can identify them. This is the Ennis House in California. Like most others, I fell in love with Wright's concrete bas relief above the fireplace here. It's a genius piece of art and hard to miss when you step into the room. Also represented in this space and through this image are the four elements, earth, water, fire, and air. This is the Hollyhock House in California. When Wright said light is the beautifier of the building, he was talking about this space, the great workroom at SC Johnson Wax headquarters. I've never seen a more magical interior light. I preach in my photo workshops light and lines first. So try looking uh, try looking for those in these images first instead of the design and see what you discover. See the light in the back? That was the first thing I noticed. And in this image, I use the architecture to get you there through the lines on the right and repetitive window shapes on the left. It's like a funnel. And this is the Laurent House in Illinois, the only building that Wright created specifically for a client with a physical disability. So not hard to spot the lines here, right? They're all over the place. And that's the composition I wanted. Follow them as they lead your eye around to all four corners of the space and notice how the very center of the image has no hard lines to give you a good, good spot to land directly in the center of Wright Studio at Taliesin. I scrambled for an hour trying to find a good location to incorporate this design, which resembles the hills of Marin County in the background, then waited another hour for two things, the lights on the Marin County Civic Center to turn on and the sunset to be just right. 
The sunset color and shapes more than I ever could have asked for. I was lucky that day. Now I don't have a favorite right site only because every time I photograph a new one, it changes. But I can tell you that the Dana Thomas house was one of the most difficult. Not only because the interior is dark, but because the outside light source through the window is very bright. Photographing both very bright and very dark in the same scene is difficult to control through a camera. Remember, light and lines here. If you follow the lines of Unity Temple in Chicago, you will never want to leave the space. And that's how exactly how I felt the first time I photographed it. The one to one to one ratio wraps around you and those lines never let go. I chose a lower point of view here to highlight the aspect of the space. This was a hurry up and wait scenario. You photograph too early and your sky is too bright. You wait too long and it turns to black. There's also an added bonus here. Those little yellow lines in the foreground are fireflies. I checked two things off my photography list at Beshalom Synagogue this night. Probably never seen this right design, huh? Ah, that's a joke. We all know it's a Guggenheim. Uh, I decided to pack a really wide 11 millimeter angle lens with me along with my tilt shift lenses just to have a little fun making the beautiful white and black lines of light more of a swirl than a circle here. And this is a tough one to guess too, right? Uh, it's falling water and it's a right masterpiece. As I waited almost a year for my artist in residence to begin here, this is the first image I wanted to capture. So thank you all so much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the images and, and I encourage you to check out the light and lines at a right site near you when you can.